interesting to, to, to talk about traditional structures um, of the uh, economy and globalization yeah, and innovation. So, uh, to some degree, uh, because uh, Martin Schulz said the European model shouldn't become copying China, but uh, going uh, or, or continuing a kind of a European model for the future. Um, uh, do you see this as a, as a clue for, for this uh, prosperous development, or, um, or would you like to comment on this? Absolutely, yes, uh, Martin Schulz is right. Um, I have to stress that before I uh, came here, I spent two years as a, in the private sector as a senior advisor with uh, Olam Berger Strategy Consultants, uh, which is Munich-based but running more than 40 offices worldwide. And this is uh, uh, the only uh, consulting company uh, of European origin, not of German origin, of European origin, which is able to compete worldwide with. Uh, the American consulting companies, and uh, uh, there are at the moment there are 2,500 uh, uh, experts uh, working for Olandaga, and it was a very uh, I guess I learned a lot of things there, and uh, I was occupied with uh, European affairs, with energy issues, with Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe, and uh, the most convincing and most convinced uh, Europeans. I've ever met are uh, the members of um, uh, the executive board of uh, Wanadara because they always pointed out there's a European style of management and um, if you don't want to be uh, oppressed by the American style of management or the Chinese style of management you have to strengthen the European Union and European integration. Um, it's a different um, style of living, it's a different habit of becoming, and uh, you have to preserve it and uh, to fight for that, and therefore European integration is the only solution. Yeah, I was hoping for... Uh, Maybe if you introduce yourself, as, as we did in the last... Okay, right, sorry. Uh, that's it uh, from the Strasbourg uh, Grenoble. I would like to ask you two questions. Uh, the first one would be um, Have you perceived, uh, or do you think that there is a difference in the cooperation that you, that you create with the other regions since the, um, the Baden Württemberg region, since the majority uh, has changed? So it's, uh, yeah. since the, uh, Corporations with the other region, but then the Gapmutter uh, Corporation with the Rodal Bison. And I was wondering, um, don't you think that it's unfair just to do a cooperation with uh, the richest uh, region of the Europe? Yes, you name them after this uh, other corporation, but just I think that it's unfair and it's maybe economically uh, not very efficient to have such an equality and to strengthen the equality, the geographical inequalities. Uh, so yeah, these would be my two questions. Okay, the government, the composition of the government by parties. There are some uh, basic issues for a region like Baden-Württemberg, these are That's innovation, that's energy, this is uh, low carbon industry, um, applied science, and that didn't change. That didn't change. Um, perhaps we are working in another kind of. Um, some other style of, of government. Yeah, more officially, it's a more citizen based style of government. Um, but uh, we have to be very careful by pronouncing.
housing is um, in fact um, it's not that it's not that it's not a, such a big difference in, in the cooperation between partners because uh, especially here in Brussels parties are not uh, the factor number one um, most of the people know that uh, I have been a member of the, of the uh, German Bundestag, but it's not in, it's of less importance to them uh, for which party. It's, here in Brussels, it's much more important that I used to be a member of the <coughs> Committee on Foreign Affairs and that I was occupied with uh, uh, international relations, European integration, Eastern Europe, Balkans, things like that. Yeah, that's of more importance. And uh, uh, it's similar um, in, in concerning the composition of, of, of the government. Perhaps now the green-red government uh, of Baden-Württemberg is more careful and more, to tell an example, more um, more careful in the relation to Hungary, for example, we are not stopping cooperation, not, absolutely not. Um, but we are taking care of uh, Sorry, who is... Hungary? Hungary, oh. yeah. yeah. Well, we know the situation in Hungary. Um, and we get uh, some really bad reports uh, uh, from Hungary, and we have to be very careful. Uh, but we are continuing to cooperate with uh, Hungary because they are partners and uh, governments and uh, actions of governments will change. But Hungary, Hungary remains. And uh, um, there are uh, some very successful projects and uh, we are trying to keep them uh, as our partners. Um, but on the official level you have to be careful and uh, well, it's your choice who will be the keynote speaker uh, in some official events and uh, whom you are inviting and uh, whom not. So these are the things you have to, to do and I guess that our government is handling these things in a different way than our predecessors did it. But on the other hand, who started cooperating with Serbia, with the Democrats in Serbia, the, the Democratic Party in uh, in Serbia um, uh, years ago with Boris Tadic when he was president and he's the left democrat president of Serbia that had been the uh, Christian Democrats of Baden-Württemberg who clearly pointed out that Serbia is a country of big interest to Baden-Württemberg and for them it was important that uh, somebody is running the country who wants to improve uh, the rule of law um, but uh, um, it was of less importance to them that it's a left-wing government. So this is a rational choice. Yeah. And um, so parties are not the main factor. Parties are not the main factor. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, that's important and that's correct. Yeah. Um, the second point issue um, that the the strong regions are cooperating and the wealthy regions are cooperating. It was not to a point in the 80s. Um, I remember because I, I joined some of the activities um, being a student in the late 80s. And uh, I think that the key issue was not to bring together the wealthy regions, but similar regions. And uh, Similar uh, in terms of uh, innovation, research, and manufacturing. Um, it turned out that these are probably the rich regions, yeah, but we wouldn't find similar partners um, in England, for example, because there is none, no manufacturing left in England. And therefore, we don't have partners uh, in England. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're trying to bring together our partners from the west and from, from the east. 
For example, we are organizing meetings of the four motors together with uh, uh, the autonomous uh, province of Vojvodina from, from Serbia. Uh, because they are included in the Danube strategy, like whole Serbia, uh, but Novi Sad is of uh, special uh, importance for us. Uh, I have two, two questions. Uh, on which uh, concrete topics uh, do you cooperate with the other regional generations? Uh, what are the concrete measures, maybe the, the strategy uh, you, you, you did and you do? And uh, another, uh, another question, what is the role of the European Committee of the Regions uh, in this cooperation? Well, the European Committee of Regions is just here in, in the neighborhood, uh, two minutes away from us. Uh, the General Director of the Committee of Regions, uh, Mr. Stahl, uh, is not only in Germany, he's from our region, he's from our Wittenberg. We are well connected with them. Um, but in fact, it's more, um, for us, it's more um, an, an organization for for information, for informal talks, for um, exchange of views, it's not uh, um, it's not an organization to take decisions for us. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, it's it's more um, a market for information and for uh, to get for for networking. Yeah. So it pays off later. It's not the institution that pays off. It's the, the networking inside the institution plays off. But you need to, it's in, therefore it's important. Therefore it's important. But not as an institution, more, more as a market. No. Um, yes. And the, the, the concrete uh, strategy you will be built with the other region. Have you, have you concrete. Uh, uh, for example, it's. Uh, Yes, you can't, um, mainly it's, perhaps it seems to be a little bit cloudy, yeah, because there are a lot of things, but uh, mainly it's, it's applied science, how to run, uh, not universities, but uh, um, uh, uh, faculties for, for applied science, for engineering, um, how to, at the moment, um, it's very important, it's to, it's what you are calling the, the dual system in education, uh, in um, uh, long, long life learning, things like that, yeah, um, um, competitiveness, um, Activity and, and uh, labor administration, things like that. Cross border labor market. Uh, you have to bear in mind that the border between Baden Württemberg and France and Switzerland, it's not only our uh, regional partners, partners are not only members of the European Union. One of our most important regional partners is a non member state of the European Union in Switzerland. And, uh, um, uh, there are a lot of administrative problems and cultural problems with Switzerland. Even if they're speaking a similar dialect than uh, in our neighboring regions, but it's a, it's a totally different culture and administration. And um, they're, they're, they're different. Really, they are really, really different, and there are a lot of a lot of uh, important misunderstandings. And we have dozens of common issues which we are working on, and none of these issues is really solved together with Switzerland. Yeah? Even if you are from Greece or from Slovakia. Uh, or from Portugal, you think of uh, well, the German-speaking Switzerland uh, people from Switzerland and the southwestern guys from Baden-Württemberg. They are the same. No, it's a different part. <laughs> uh, we like them. We need them, and we, uh, we dare to bring them into the European Union. And all the professional 
people from Switzerland who are here in Brussels, and there are lots of them, yeah? uh, working for the companies, working for the state administration, for the local administration here in Brussels. Everybody of them knows that uh, Switzerland has to become a member of the European Union. But all of them are uh, frightened how to, uh, are, are scared um, how they will manage to explain that to their citizens. Yeah. Um, and therefore, uh, they are our regional partners, but they are also our partners um, concerning the uh, accession to the European Union. And, uh, but what I wanted to, to point out is that the border between Baden-Württemberg, uh, France and Switzerland is the border where the most labor um, uh, 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 cross-border uh, movements uh, is, is taking place in, in the whole European Union. Yeah. And therefore, uh, the people are living on the one side of the border and are working on the other side and traveling every day from one side to the other day, to the other side. So we, are, we have a deep experience concerning uh, healthcare, social issues, social uh, assurance, uh, uh, running uh, a multinational labor <coughs> um, and things like that. Yeah. And these are things we are, um, we are working on together with, with our partners, especially these things. Maybe just short to explain why we are laughing because one of the German, German participants started <laughs> 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 in, in Berlin is from Switzerland. Where are, where are you from? <laughs> From Basel. From Basel. Well, in Basel, uh, they are uh, the most German. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would, uh, I would, wouldn't agree um, that on the, in terms of the, in terms of cultural differences, I, I don't think that it's really important, or uh, people don't give that a uh, big uh, meaning, you know, in the everyday life. Because as you told, uh, as you said before, the transporter um, exchange is, is really high in this region. Yes. But maybe yeah, in uh, terms of um, administrational structures, they might be some big differences. There are big differences, as you you, uh, you notice it uh, during uh, negotiations that. And a very different style, very different. But uh, it's true, we, are, uh, uh, we agree to run uh, a common airport, especially for your region, who is serving for everybody in the region. And that works. But looking at the Swiss airport in Zurich, it doesn't work at all. Yeah? So the, the common run, uh, the, the joint uh, airport uh, in your region, this is not a problem, but the national Swiss airport in Zurich is a big problem to all the neighbors. Yeah, so you see the difference. Okay, we have three: Amblara, uh, Sabina, and we switch to that. Uh, yeah, two questions. I suppose uh, you said that um, going forward, the way to reverse globalization is is more uh, European integration. And I was wondering, when we talk about more European integration at this stage, we also know that it has to involve some kind of um, um, step forward in the democratic legitimacy side of things. And I was wondering if a region like Bad Wittenberg has a, does, does it have a view on that? Or how does it think about it? And my other question is to do with the, trying to get a picture of what, um, what a region like Bad Wittenberg can do. Uh, for example, there's talk of an EU-US free trade agreement at the moment. Is that something that you're, you'll be involved in in Brussels, the negotiations, whatever you can? We're not involved in the negotiations directly, but it's uh, very important to us, um, to our industry and to, to our region. As I know, there are three types of regional policy. The first one based on infrastructure, the second one based on uh, uh, innovation and the third one based on creativity. And by creativity, uh, as I heard, uh, Richard, Richard Florida said that regions trying to attract uh, people uh, to occupy with uh, culture, 
literature, education, and arts, and, and uh, name them of the creation class. And the question is, do you think that European regions should behave themselves as brands and uh, be, uh, be competitive to each other, or Europe is uh, an inter-regional brand and they should uh, cooperate so that they attract the, the creative class from all over the world? No, um, I think that uh, creativity is playing a role in all uh, segments and uh, branches, and uh, that could be you can be creative uh, as an artist, as an uh, entrepreneur, as a scientist, as a politician. So uh, you need to have uh, creative. Uh, it's more more in your mind and uh, so it is. You need it everywhere. You need it everywhere. As a craftsman, uh, as, as ever, everywhere. And uh, um, for an example, uh, uh, Danish strategy, there are um, 11 or 12 uh, Program areas uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> environment, uh, tourism, uh, competitiveness, uh, things like that. But there is also <coughs> also a need for uh, a program area uh, for culture yeah, and cultural uh, activities. And we, at the moment, there there is a little ex exhibition of. Uh, 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 from the Danube region, uh, which are near to the Danube issues. Yeah. So we we'll try also to take care of that. Yeah. can compete and cooperate at the same time? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> For example, we are competing with Bavaria everywhere, every time. <laughs> um, in Berlin, in Brussels, um, and there are some rankings, some of them are ridiculous, yeah? Who is producing uh, the, the, the best tasting pretzel, you know, pretzel, yeah? yeah of course. Uh, there are contests, there are rankings, yeah? Who, uh, who has the best uh, ranked universities? Um, who is producing the best cars? Um, things like that. You speak a better joke. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, things like that. Yeah, some of them are ridiculous, some are self-ironic, um, uh, but some are real. Yeah. And um, yes, uh, competition uh, is helpful. Yes, but you can compete uh, and, and cooperate. Yes. Yeah. Hi, I'm Martin. I'm from. North Rhine Bostonia, now studying in Berlin history. Um, you said that you were also uh, in cooperation with. In, uh, uh, by the general directorates, uh, let's say by Ijo Vijo, for example, uh, they are not fitting to Bandunda because we're too rich. But uh, finding partners <coughs> in other regions which are targeted by such programs. We can cooperate not to make money of that, but to be part of the consortium for to, to participate. Yeah? And it pays off for us in a different way. Not because we are getting uh, uh, some money from, from the European Union. I'm always pointing out to our uh, politicians in London, like for example, to our uh, home administration, uh, who will pay money to one of the most who will pay money to one of the richest regions in the European Union? Who? There is only Luxembourg or Switzerland. Yeah? Uh, Switzerland is not part of the Union, and Luxembourg has some problems with the banking sector. Yeah? Um, so who will pay money to us? Nobody. Yeah? So you have to be uh, creative um, uh, 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 to participate in programs which are not uh, programmed for you. We are not 
getting more money. It's not a trick to, to get money. Yeah? You don't get money by that means, but uh, not more than others. Yeah? But we know that uh, being a part in programs, the, the Commission trusts us. Yeah? Because we are we don't have a problem with our accountability or transparency or uh, efficiency. We are able to provide these things. And uh, we are regarded as a partner in such programs to um, perhaps to motivate others um, to uh, also to behave in terms of accountability and, and transparency. And we know that there are a lot of problems in that issues throughout the European Union. And you don't have to go far away. Um, and there are also scandals in Germany. And there have, uh, have been a lot of scandals in Eastern Germany uh, how to spend the money uh, uh, for the target regions uh, of the uh, cohesion fund and uh, regional programs of the European Union there. So this is... Uh, um, especially between France and Germany, there are a lot of situations. And I know that regional cooperation sometimes is much more effective, uh, much more pragmatic, and closer, first of all, to some people. people. Uh, why we are not using this instrument of regional cooperation for the crisis in the southern countries, like an uh, initiative from the rich European uh, regions? Uh, and connecting them with the regions in Greece, in Italy. I mean, there were. I mean, also. I mean, there are also regions in Italy. They have no crisis. I mean, Tyrol has no crisis. I think. I'm, I'm not sure. Crisis of identity. Yeah. <laughs> but really, looking where are where are the regional? Where is the regional need? And to connect them in a special program. Let's call that a special program. This is my first question. My second question. And before I ask my second question, I would like to tell you a story. A little story. Two years ago, I was sitting with, with Mr. Jung in Savern. Savern is a, a very beautiful town in uh, Alsace, in France. We were sitting in a seminar like this. We had a discussion about regional cooperation. I think, yes, yes so regional cooperation. And Mr. Jung was sitting on my left side, like, but on my right side, there was also Mr. Jung sitting. How it comes? <laughs> on my right side, Mr. Jung. Was, um, he was uh, um, the chief editor, the yeah. chief editor of, of uh, the biggest newspaper of Alsace. He was Alsacian, French. He was German from Baden. He was from Alsace. <laughs> Both had the name Jung. The name is the same name. I mean, this is now we can go back in history why that's like this. But this is a European region, which is very one very close to the other. <laughs> And we had a fantastic discussion. So my question is, my, now I'm coming to my question, what do you think, I, I know you're from Baden and you're very close to, to Elsass and you're grown up with that. How important is for you this French-German <coughs> French uh, relationship? Is that only something interesting for France or Germany? Or is that, especially in this crisis, also an important thing? Or could it be important or is it important? And by the way, how important are these, because you were speaking about the cultural differences between Switzerland and Baden, how important are cultural differences in situations like that, from your point of view and experience? Well, uh, in my home region, which is the, the Upper Rhine uh, area, the, the region of Strasbourg, uh, uh, this is... Um, for us, it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's a normal life. It's usual life. Uh, it's, it's ordinary life um, to, to cross the border to France because it's not a real border anymore, and uh, the people are uh, living um, in a similar uh, similar habits, uh, and a similar style. I'm not a specialist of the, the question of question in Europe, but so maybe my question won't be so clear or understandable for you. But don't you think that um, the European Union, as a common market, as a like, strategic resource that the region can mobilize from, from uh, themselves, um, accentuate the inequalities between the region inside countries or not? 
are there like a, at the benefit of the most for mm -hmm. region, for example, um, the region, the, the closest one from the border, this kind of thing? Yeah. You have to speak louder. Okay. okay. Well, don't you think that um, the European Union actions rate the inequality between regions? No, we didn't. We didn't manage to uh, create a new regio. It's uh, it's all not. It's also not a metropole region. In fact, it's uh, uh, it's it's a horrible mixture of. Um, associations, administrative uh, boards and uh, committees and uh, none of our citizens is able to uh, um, to Thanks, great uh, Do you have um, as Land uh, any experience in regional cooperation with uh, Greek leaders? Because you said there are every single country, EU country uh, is active in, the, in Brussels on this level, on the regional level. I suppose Greece is one of them as well. And the second one, uh, uh, in the morning we had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Yanis Emanovitis from a European Policy Center. And he spoke about um, the biggest problem which Europe, uh, European Union is going to face in the nearest future. And among them was uh, separatism. Surprised me a little bit, even if I know about Alaska and Scotland and in Corsica or Sicily. And my question is: um, Is uh, regional cooperation a kind of um, of medicine against this separatist tendencies, or is it the other way around that it is it's strengthened actually these separatist tendencies in some parts of Europe? I guess it's a kind of recipe against uh, separatism because uh, um, if you are allowed to uh, um, to if you are allowed to show your regional identity um, and everybody understands something different with uh, regional identity, but it exists. I'm sure it exists, and so if you are allowed to show it, I guess that this is. Uh, a anti-stress momentum, yeah? and uh, um, addressing to Greek to Greece, um, I guess it would be a very good opportunity, especially in that situation, um, to uh, not only to be not only to focus on uh, taxation and. Uh, Austerity policy, and I'm I'm quite aware of the fact that uh, uh, people are suffering, and that this is the wrong way. And I'm quite aware of the fact that if uh, the Greek program would be um, implemented in Germany, that the people would uh, uh, that the people would resist against that. Absolutely, absolutely sure. Um, and, uh, but I think it would be very clever uh, from the Greek uh, politicians now to start to uh, um, uh, to turn to the to address uh, to the neighbors because uh, Greece has a lot of things to do in neighboring policy. Um, Albania, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Turkey. There are a lot of open questions and issues, and uh, I guess that that would be a very good idea, not only to focus on uh, 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 on the problems uh, you do have inside the country, but also to widen the context and uh, to address the questions you have to address to anyhow. Even if uh, Greece would be a wealth country and uh, a netto payer inside uh, the European Union, you would have to address uh, to your neighbors. And uh, I guess that the citizens of the European Union around you 
they are living in the, <coughs> or they think that they are paying for Greece. In fact, they are paying only a little bit for Greece. Because I know that all the credits given to Greece are immediately um, absorbed to a high rate, absorbed by German banks, by French banks, by others. Uh, but I guess that the citizens of Europe uh, would be very delighted if uh, you would solve your problems in the neighborhood, that you would uh, take into account that there are a lot of rich people in Greece betraying the state and the Greek population and not paying money. And every time I'm reading the news, uh, in the newspapers that there is some attack against uh, any uh, ministry or uh, party uh, 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 office, I'm always wondering why there is not an attack against any one of the uh, hyper uh, rich Greek citizens. Because it's, they are the guys uh, the citizens have to address. The non taxpayers. No? The non taxpayers. And afterwards, uh, perhaps we could uh, um, implement. Um, or, or, or build up uh, a real taxation system and things like that you need uh, to run a state. Um, and these are the things, these are the issues where uh, German institutions, uh, German uh, regions, towns, local administrations are cooperating with partners uh, in Greece. Um, I've never been to Thessaloniki, but uh, all I'm noticing and all the things I'm told is that the mayor of Thessaloniki seems to be somebody Europe is trusting in and trying to uh, bring things uh, forward. And so there is a lot of space for regional cooperation. Yes, but you need to take the, thing, the things in your hand, you need the budgets, you need uh, uh, legislation for these things, you need to be, you need to have a kind of uh, independence and uh, your own um, possibilities and your, your own opportunities to, to, uh, to run or, or to take over the responsibility. Definitely, it's a topic we should think about. What could be the role of the regional cooperation in this situation for, for Greece?